Let me talk to you. Welcome to Assemble. I'm Matt. Good to see you. Good to hear you. Now you can hear me. Let me talk to you. Welcome to the show today. As I was trying to say, w- did something happen last night? What happened? Was there a show? Was there shenanigans? Oh, Ooh, AEW. You know, big old mark for WWE. A bunch of shills coming out of the woodwork now. Oh, daddy. A whole lot of nothing is what everybody figures too. I agree. I figured a whole lot of nothing was going on in this entire episode of AEW Dynamite. Let me tell you, it's wild. It was so silly. We're going to talk about it. Um, Hold on. I got to fix this, actually. Uh, participant mode. Anyone. I apologize. I had it in participation mode for members only. Uh, chat is now open to everybody, so I apologize there. It was set up for something else. There we go. Ace Anarchy. Yeah. Thank you to all our channel members as well. You guys coming through there. Look at all those nifty little badges you got in there. Kadar, go, go get a. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I apologize for a second earlier. I had it in members only uh, from previous show. So, so what happened? A Gurns nay Panda Society. Yeah. What's going on? too sweet to all of you so did AEW have a show last night i want to talk about this did an episode last night i was during dynamite at like 9 p.m eastern i got down in my little hole here and i just started i went off for like 15 minutes about this whole thing in real time because the bucks they did the promo they did this thing and there's more information that's come out of the fallout of the cm punk jack perry situation so we talked about this last night guys i had like 15 minutes going at it just like what is happening so silly i want to talk about this in depth a little bit more because there's new information coming out about um the bucks tony khan backstage all the good stuff it's good for business ladies and gentlemen what can i say the internet's running wild the memes are hilarious twitter's hilarious i want to talk about the jack perry thing the footage them doing it talk to all of you about it is it wcw 2000 maybe it's getting it's getting it's getting there it's getting there. We're one step away from, like, the Hulk Hogan moment of, like, that's why this is going into the toilet. <laughs> We're one moment away from that. I thought about this this morning. I'm like, what is the tipping point? What is This could be the tipping point, but I'm like, what is the tipping point of all of this? To me, it's if... To get to WCW 2000 level, in my eyes, it needs... Well, it, go get us as finger poke to a moment, possibly. In my eyes, the way they get there is it's the Vince Russo moment. It's when Tony Khan eventually goes on TV, holding the baseball bat like Vince Russo, bro, and comes down, march into the ring, and then has like an on-air talent meeting where all the wrestlers are around the ring, and then Tony like vacates all the belts (laughs) and starts over. Then he introduces a new general manager. Oh. It's so freaking wild. Anyways, let's get started with all of this, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Assemble Live. Let me talk to you. 280 fantastic human beings in the chat here. And I will say this as I get into all of this. Um, I I watch AEW. I like AEW. I'm not trying to do that where I'm like, oh, WWE is the best. When AEW was in, in the inception of AEW, I'm so happy, so excited, and really have enjoyed the product when it started. Then it kind of tapered off for me. And we needed that as fans, as wrestling fans, because WWE was in the toilet for so long. I was so sick for years of the Roman Reigns experiment, Vince running things. The booking was nonsensical. Didn't We were getting two out of three falls matches on Raw. Pandemic. And then we got AEW as feeling like a real alternative product at a time when fans really, really did need it. So I wanted to say all of that because... Anybody's going to come in here and be like, well, you're defending WWE. No, WWE is a better overall product right now. But there was a time that AEW was a a better product. So let's begin. Report Young Buck's legitimate backstage reaction to Tony Khan airing CM Punk Jack Perry footage. All right. Well, then let's do that. Let's talk about all of that. A zombie boss with Super Chat. Dude, thank you so much. Back at it with all clown wrestling. Kind of. It's getting... It's getting real silly there, brother. 
Uh, Anchoring, thank you, brother, for the two bucks. Tony Clown, effing circus level, Copeland, Cope. <laughs> yeah, does Cope come out next week and say, I love it here. This is where best wrestle. It's like, could you find another tagline that, that rolls off the tongue a little bit more? The Young Bucks. Legitimate reaction to Tony Khan's decision to air CM Punk Jack Perry footage of Dynamite has reportedly been revealed. Da, da, da. Speaking on the Wade Keller hotline on PW Torch VIP, Wade Keller said the following. I like Wade Keller. I've been checking with people in AEW. <laughs> this is from Wade. And I've been told that this was not something the Bucks were in favor of doing. It wasn't their idea. It was Tony Khan's idea that he wanted this out there. Like, yeah, sure. Tony, Tony, you could do that, but seems like a Keller seemingly backed this up and said he hasn't heard of anyone who was in favor of the decision and morale in the company isn't great as a result. Uh, Matt and Nick Jackson responded on Twitter after the segment, referring to themselves as EV Petty. CM Punk, wouldn't it be just like the killer thing if at the end of all of this, the Bucks were the ones who were kind of like, yeah, we don't like this. this is, you know, guys, this is getting a little silly. Imagine if the Bucks were the ones that we were all that we look at and they're like, yeah, this is too much. So apparently, according to Wade Keller, according to Wade Keller, it was uh, not the Bucks idea to do this. It was Tony Khan's. Oh, guys, I don't know. Zombie Boss, thank you again. I'm so excited for Sandman 2K24. I hope his theme is Enter Sandman. It will not because of copyright and music that they won't pay for that license. They will not. But I am also excited for that DLC. It's coming up in like uh, in like a month, actually. It's gonna be great. So they did. Uh, Henshin is correct. They proved Punk right. They had this footage. There's so much to say about all of this. I'm just like this proof Punk was correct. So is that the point? If this is correct that the Bucks didn't want to do this, it was Tony's idea. You showed this footage. Like, and then Ariel Helwani even posted it and they got copyright stricken like by AEW, which is also hilarious. AEW went around online last night and started just taking down everyone reposting the footage. It's like, what did you expect people were going to do? And Helwani matched up his interview with Punk in the moment of the scrum. And they took down that footage, which was ironic, because it was kind of weird, because it's like, but that was his footage mixed in with the other one. The other one had no audio either. The fight. So, they show he did that, and it matched up, and it's everything Punk said in Ariel's interview. It choked him a little. That's what he did. And it broke up right away by Samoa Joe, which is what he said he did. It looks like Tony Khan was like over by the monitors, like where everything got shoved in. And Tony does like this. He, you could just see like his head and like his arm. And as they're fighting or in an altercation, you see Tony's like hand come out like, eh. It, and he was almost, just, it had this feel like it just looked like he's like, hey, hey, don't do that. Hey, go, can, can, hey, stop that. Don't. It was so wild to see the 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 altercation itself no it was not some big fight it was a shove it was a choke cold and it got broken up people are like i've seen bigger high school fights it's like yeah this wasn't much of anything punk walked off i like how if you saw the footage the video footage i like how alistair black was like in there holding a coffee he's got like his hand in his pocket like he's just very chill he comes in he's just like hmm. And he turns around and walks out with Punk. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. But what did this prove? If you if you pull back for a second, so we, we know what, like, Punk, all of this stuff, this has happened. And this happened many months ago, by the way. Which I will say, Tony Khan. You've been interviewed many a times over the last six to eight months regarding this specific incident. And you've always said, no comment, no comment, no comment. How come now you're commenting? How come now you're literally, sorry, how come now you're literally showing the footage on your broadcast? Because Punk said, called you a clown? And you wanted to stick it to him. It's like, well, yeah, you really stuck it to the guy on the other program. 
that you just got trending on Twitter. Oh. So, Perry was in the wrong, and Jay? I think everyone is in the wrong. But I mostly think Tony Khan is in the wrong because it be his 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 company that it got to this point. And then it, it gives more credence if you're not a punk fan or if you just think this is all silly. It gives more credence to punk's whole story of this is what happened with not just this all in fight. But everything leading up to it, where he was like, he told Tony he didn't want to do collision and that that was a bad idea. And like, just let me go. And Tony said, no, according to Punk, because the footage lines up with what Punk said in the interview from his perspective, people now can kind of be like, well, he was correct about that. You literally showed the footage and it all lines up. So the hell? Yeah, you do kind of look like a clown, Tony. There is so much to break down with all of this. It's absolutely wild. Uh, Fiendish FB, dude, thank you so much. Consider that a gift, Matt. Buddy, thank you very, very much for your support. I appreciate you coming through always, supporting the show, supporting the channel. Myron as well, thank you very, very much. Imagine the money they could have made if they did this angle when Punk was there. Six-man tag, yes. That's the thing. It's like, this happened. And now Punk, like he said in the interview, he's like, he quit. He quit on the spot. He's like, you're a clown and I'm out. I quit. But it's like other outlets have said, too. Imagine if you made money off of this. You didn't make any money off of this, Tony. Tony, Tony, listen, Tony. You, you've hot shot one night, one segment's worth of attention. That's my perspective with all of this. And I want to get back to the conversation around this guy, Tony, and like the, the Bucks saying that they didn't have anything to do with this. But let me say this. You set you teed this up for over a week. You teased it. Devin shall not subscribe. Guys, thank you so much for subscribing and supporting. That's awesome. You've got a week of hype building around this segment. So you got the internet buzzing. Okay, so you created some intrigue, some buzz. Everyone's waiting. It's WrestleMania weekend too, by the way, when he said he's going to do this. So sure. So then after WrestleMania weekend, we're all waiting for this moment. It's your boy Smoke. Way to go. Universe member. Thank you, buddy. Too sweet. We got this build up. It's going to happen. He takes TV time. They run a promo. They set this whole thing up. That, and they built around like they had a countdown to the Bucks. They had a countdown on the show. So Tony and slash whoever is in charge of creating that segment and that whole thing bad day on you because that was a bad move they hyped it up for a week you also put a clock on it a countdown to a segment the bucks did it and the bucks were doing the coy bucks thing where they're trying to be clever where they were like that's like hey hey don't oh, we shouldn't say that that's like hey you should be saying about this in, in, in a public setting it's like then why are you responding to it so then they show the footage. There's no audio, which made it hilarious online. And then you end up with, it's over. Now, you guys tell me in the chat, how long was the segment? The footage was what, a minute? It was 53 seconds or something like that. But we had two minutes almost of the Bucks teeing it up, and then the footage, and then the FTR shoot style response where they rush the ring and then they go off and Dax is all like, Oh, you talking about my family is wrestling for me, brother. Burton says 15 minutes, like 10 minutes, Joey, let's go on the conservative side and say this in front to back was 10 minutes of TV time. Zach, I'm with you. Let's just say it's about 10 minutes. Kadar. You're the man. Always you're number one in the chat, by the way, Kadar. I always love you. You got 10 minutes of TV time. You have dedicated to this thing. The thumbnail says it all. Kind of. <laughs> you could have done so much. So much with 10 minutes out of a two-hour program. Less than two hours because you take out commercials. Could have done so much, bro. 
bra and panties, Matt. No. <laughs> Matthew Kenny, 9 minutes and 47 seconds, but who's counting? Not many people, you know. Steve D subscribed. Yeah. I'll get to the super chats in just a second, guys. Thank you very much for your support. 10 minutes. 9 minutes and 47 seconds. Also, because there's so much in here, guys. I apologize if I'm all over the place. So, you, one of the killer things for me was Tony Khan's, excuse me, was Tony Schiavone's, the look on his face. The segment ends before the, the before FTR comes out to respond. Taz is sitting quietly. Excalibur is doing his, oh, we're going to get a dynamite. Da, da, da. And Tony Schiavone looked, as people have said online, looked like it was WCW 2000. Tony Schiavone in the six seconds that the camera went to the desk kind of su to me summed up everything and how fans AEW fans because I'm one of them wrestling fans wrestling bro how wrestling fans felt Shivani's face was just well we did that now now here we go what a waste of resources time energy and everything for all of this 10 minutes of TV time dedicated to a thing that happened backstage privately at your event, at your largest event of the year. Ever, actually, excuse me, because Tony loves to say that it was the largest gate and all this stuff. So fine, largest event you ever did in wrestling. Congratulations. No one focused on it. It was monopolized by a backstage thing. You now talked about it six months later. To who? To forward... Again, if the Bucks have nothing to do with this, then it's Tony Khan's idea that a good storyline is I'm going to put 10 minutes of TV time together to promote Dynasty pay-per-view and this tag team finals match for the titles between FTR and the Bucks because it needs heat. So the idea for Tony to draw attention and heat to, all, to this tag team match to what I guess would be, you know... If, trying to think if you're Tony, the idea is to sell tickets, right? To sell tickets to Dynamite last night, to sell tickets to Dynasty because you're supposed to want to see the tag team match after all this went down. I gotta say, I don't think that did that. That's how I feel about this whole thing. I don't think the 10 minutes dedicated to this could have done that. And I want to talk about Will Ospreay to again, uh, uh, today as well. I don't think that this was worth your 10 minutes, Tony Khan. Did it do what you wanted it to do to sell tickets and intrigue for Dynasty? Not to me. I'm much less enthused for your product more than ever. I want to love all wrestling. I don't care what company it is because I want the men and women to have jobs and put on shows and create interesting stories and have good matches and people get paid and competition is good. On and on it goes. That's me. But I think giving 10 minutes of TV time to something like this that happened eight months ago isn't exactly a good use of time and especially focusing on somebody from a different company who are in a whole other stratosphere they are not competition impact is more competition with AEW WWE is not competition with AEW they're di and they're different products like the wrestling but they do different things it's gonna go to these super chats here for a second guys and we're gonna continue on guys thank you so much for your support if you guys enjoy let me talk to you here live uh do this every single week we didn't have it yesterday because it was a busy day Matt was a little done. I was capped out, but we got more content out there for you. And today we do let me talk to you. We generally do this every Wednesday around lunchtime. And I'm super excited you guys come here. I had to do it today because I'm like, I got to talk about this stuff. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all your super chats and your support. What this does is it helps support the channel to go and build out Studio 3.0, which is over there, um, which is very exciting. So if you guys are new members or you're supporting or you're just watching and hanging out your eyeballs your time that you are offering to give up here for the channel it means the world because i get to go and do things like build out the next phase of the channel and the studio and make things bigger and more badass if i can so it's gonna be a lot of fun so thank you thank you thank you mercy rings rants says uh jack comes back and costs ftr the titles of dynasty i think 100 percent the same way and it's gonna go wah wah ftr came out and did their promo mercy and they chant or excuse me when the bucks came out and they did the beat down they chanted cm punk the four thousand people that were in attendance chanted cm punk 
And if they say, no, it wasn't, it was a mixed bag. Sure, I'm sure some people did not. But audibly, through the TV, I heard CM Punk chants. Is that what you wanted? You wanted to build this tag team title match going up to your pay-per-view and people are chanting for people that are not in the company? They also do this with Cody Rhodes. They mention Cody on TV, people start chanting Cody. Why are you doing that? I think Jack does come back. And you end up with Jack Perry, the Bucks, and uh, Okada, and they're all together in a faction. And then what? We'll, and then, like, and Mercy, to your point, I think that does happen. They cost the tag titles, ooh, heat on the Bucks because they got the, a sneaky win. You didn't need the punk footage. If you're going to have Jack Perry back on TV, just do this as a normal storyline. You could have not done the footage and you could have mentioned the Bucks in story motivation of we were distracted by the events that happened at all in because of people you associate with wink wink nudge nudge and that's why we lost because we couldn't focus that that storyline logic could work it's very thin but at least it's something you could at least work with that right and then you could have Jack Perry come in, slide in on Sunday, and cost FTR the match, the titles. Then you got Okada with the title. Then you've got the Bucks with the title. And give Jack Perry a title. And then, boom, you got this faction. Then there's heat for a week. But they don't build off this stuff, which is a whole other thing going on. Uh, it's your boy, Smoke. Member for eight months. Dude, thank you very, very much. Thanks for supporting, uh, responding to my message. Oh, to, oh, Smoke. Oh, sorry. Smoke. Yes. Hi. Yeah, no problem. Dude, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Yeah, reach out anytime. I appreciate it. You came out and you just, you said kind words. That's nice. That's positivity. Uh, go get a mods. $5. Thank you very much. Tony witnessed a fight building between two employees right in front of him and did nothing. Forget wrestling. That's just being a bad manager. He's a bad, he's a bad, bad office manager. Where's HR? <laughs> it's true though. Like just didn't do anything. He, no, he put his hand out and he went across the monitor and he was like, stop it. God, excuse me, guys. Excuse me. We we can't do that here. We're having a we're having a show. It's the biggest pay per view ever for us. Ridiculous. FBE thing. Thumbnail says it all. Dude, thank you very very much. Uh, Jack, what about you? What about you, Jack? Jack, too sweet to you, Jack. Campaign Thomas. This was a bad faith attempt to discredit Punk's character. Ultimately, Punk is right. Uh, rightly about his time in AEW. Also, NDA protect business from bad publicity. That's kind of what it feels like, doesn't it? Does it not feel like, because Punk's like, I never wanted to sign an NDA. It's got to be to protect their image, whatever is left of it. Whatever is left of it. Um, but I do believe that too, that the campaign Thomas, that it's more like protecting their image at this point. UFL reports. Thank you very much. I feel so bad for Swerve. He's about to be the first black world champion in AEW history, and he's being completely overshadowed by Tony's pettiness. 1,000%. The rise of Swerve Strickland has been awesome. It is one of the bright spots of AEW, and there are others, but Swerve's rise over the last year has been one of the main reasons I personally like I watch AEW. I liked what he was doing with Hangman, this whole thing, leading to the triple threat. Now he's got a match against Joe. It really feels like he will beat Joe. I am excited. He will be the first black champion for AEW. Give him a long run. He deserves it. He's compelling as a face, as a heel, as a tweener. And I really, really hope that this crap stops. They focus on their TV. They focus on their world champion their big storyline, and you focus on guys like Swerve who are getting that moment to shine and it doesn't get overshadowed at some press conference where no one's talking about Swerve, they're talking about Tony Khan and the backstage crap. Uh, Salt Nation, thank you very much for $10 Super Chat. Plus, to make it worse, AEW removed their own footage from the YouTube channel and DMCA to everyone who posted it, which is wrong, AEW is dead trash. <laughs> Did they remove their own footage from their own YouTube channel? Dude... Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. Yeah, and then the DMCA, everybody who's like posting it, I'm like, what did you expect the internet was going to do? You gave the internet the the most viral thing you could do for wrestling at the moment, and it just spreads it. It's everywhere, too. Like At that point, too, it's like, it's out of the bottle. Just 
let it go. Why are you going to DMCA everybody for it? Jacob Leng Lengiel, uh, or Lengel, this was a fail my... Was I fail my AEW? The Copeland match was great. The Cope match was great, and I'm excited for... Are they doing a six-man tag, or is it a uh, mixed match tag? Uh, next week. That's going to be fun. And I thought, the, I thought that match was a lot of fun with Copeland. John. What's up, buddy? The way they tried to use the footage saying FTR orchestrated it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Who's to say the Bucks didn't orchestrate by Jack using real glass? Yeah. it's John, it's a very thin-veiled attempt of, like, this is why this story is happening. I'm like, number one, like John, you're saying too, the Bucks in storyline are trying to say that they were off their game at all in and lost because of Jack Perry and Punk. But it is kind of Perry's fault in storyline because he used the glass, which set off Punk, and then they had an alter altercation. And according to Punk said, if you got to, if you want to like do something, or no, Perry said, do something about it, according to Punk. So the shove happened, and then Tony does this. Eh. So in storyline, it's a really thin reason. Also, you're in a tag team tournament. You're in a tag team title tournament for the vacated titles. You don't really need another motivation, right? The motivation is we want, we're winning the tournament. Now we have to go up against one of our long-term rivals. Why don't you play a five-minute vignette? of FTR versus the Bucks and hype it up and put some grunge music behind it and get people feeling like this is going to be epic and make it a ladder match. No. 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 Cheap Heat for the week. Essential faction name right there. Oh, UK Cinematra. I think that's fantastic. A little bit of Cheap Heat. Woo! And Gitsu, amazing. Honestly, and uh, Johnny says crowds really fell off after MJF left. Kind of. That's how it felt. Guys, thank you all so much for your super chats. Let's keep going in here. Oh my gosh, it's so nuts. AEW backstage frustration at Tony Khan. Aaron, CM Punk, and Jack Perry altercation footage coming over from Wrestle Talk. And then I want to talk about uh, your boy, Will Ospreay. Or Osprey. Paco says, stay hydrated. I know, I got no water in here, dude. I'm okay. Feeling good. Feeling good. Berwin, good to see you. Nate, good to see you. Addressing another Dave Meltzer. Here we go. That's what I've been waiting to hear from good old Dave. You know, my thoughts are... He's kind of Triple H, but he's just not. <laughs> Old Guard, hi, from Europe. Hello. My thought is... This is Dave Meltzer. My thought is, you need to get past this. It does not... Nobody... It does nobody any good. That's a terrible sentence, Dave. I heard from people this week, a couple people... Okay. I'm not a big Dave Meltzer fan, bro. I'm not. Guys, I see Daniel Rocket subscribe. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you very much for subscribing. Drop a like on the video, too. I'm not a big Dave Meltzer fan. I know he has working things with Tony and relationships and such. It's just that the words that get spoken, I can say it. I heard from people this week, a couple people, that things happened at AEW. The hell? Anyways, Dave continues. When Punk did his interview, I asked around. Alex as a H, H S. Oh hell yeah! And the basic thing was, look, it's over and done with. Bad chapter in the history of AW, and it's over. And he can say whatever he wants. Who cares? Yes, Tony Schiavone also said that when he was asked in an interview. Move on. Seems like everybody in AW is like, could we just move on, please? Let's focus on our wrestling. Javante Venz Venzat. AW just did some bad girls club stuff. Yeah, man. There were a couple of people who were like, yeah, Adam Page never got to answer back and will never answer back because he doesn't want to be whatever. But most people were just like, we're over it. It's not part of our lives. It's not part of our company. Forget about it. Yeah, that sounds like mature, just grown adults doing their thing at their job. Now here is Dave Meltzer still. Now here, as soon as Tony did that, then I started to hear from people and it was people who were, I'm reading slowly because Dave Meltzer is also very difficult to follow. 
It was people who were just like really frustrated going like, now it's back. The whole thing is back. There's things that have happened and people have made it to look bad now and they can't answer back. It opened up a wound that needed to be closed and they need to move past this. This doesn't do any AW any good. If I'm punk, I'm laughing about it, honestly. And the person laughing the most is Drew McIntyre. <laughs> By the way, did you see Dijak was on Twitter and uh, Grayson Waller? with their special announcement, and they were just poking at this whole damn thing before it went down. Kev Kyle subscribed. Oh, yeah. What a bunch of bull. So Dave Meltzer basically said nothing, that people want to get over it and move on. 100%. Said this earlier. Dijak is the best, by the way. If Dijak is ever going to watch anything over here, he does follow me, which is hilarious. But if Dijak ever sees anything, Dijak, I'm a big fan of yours, just for your posts and for your wrestling. It is everything. I follow you, man. Dijak's good people and nice guy. Real glass. Um, I want to go back for a second here. 10 minutes, guys. 10 minutes out of a two plus, excuse me, less than two hour TV time program. Because you cut out commercials, you got like whatever you got. You got an hour and 40 minutes of TV or hour and 45 minutes of TV. 10 minutes of TV time from the Young Bucks part of doing this all the way to FT, all the way to Shivani, all the way to FTR, the beatdown, CM Punk chance in your arena for your show for a guy who doesn't work there anymore. 10 minutes. What could we have done in 10 minutes instead of this? Let's play. Let's play Booker here for a second, shall we? All right. And I got a pen and a little pen here. There we go. Got the pen. All right. Let's do this. I'm the Booker. Here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to book me some A E W, not A N W. That's root beer. That's a delicious place. And A E W is a, also a restaurant, a burger place. Fantastic little sliders. Uh, here's how I would do it. Do I show this footage? Nah, nah. You back up all the way. Back this bricks truck right back up. You don't have this footage. You don't speak of it. It's over. Don't move on. Your company doesn't need any of this. So you got this tag team title match between the Bucks. You maybe Tony Khan is like, no, I want to talk about it now. You go, Tony, here's what we'll do. Have the Bucks reference it. And we're not going to do it on dynamite. Right before Dynamite air, for the week leading up to this, the the but you can advertise it and say the Bucks are going to speak to FTR and explain why they need to win match and titles, and then you have the Bucks do a promo right before AEW goes on the air and you post it on social media, thus driving more fan attention to the product. And uh, you know what I would do? I would have the Bucks do a sit down like this, and they'd say FTR. The reason why we need those titles is number one, we're the best tag team ever in the world, and blah 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 blah. Put themselves over. We're better than you. We shouldn't have lost. The last time we lost, we had it, we were at all in, and we only lost because our heads couldn't be in the game. And you know why? It's because of your pal Phil. And that's the reason why we couldn't concentrate during our match and we lost. If they want to go that lean into it. Say all of that before Dynamite airs and do it on social media. And you say, you know what? FTR, we're coming for you. We're coming for you tonight on Dynamite. We'll see you in the ring. Boom. Go to Dynamite. Kick it off with the Bucks. Kick it off with FTR in the ring. Do a brawl. Then I want Tony Schiavone to stand up and say, you guys need to settle this. We're done with this. We're ending this feud. You're going into the finals. And I got word from Tony Khan that this is now going to be a ladder match for the vacated tag team titles. And that's it. And we'll talk about Will Ospreay in a second. The Salt Nation. Huge super chat, buddy. Thank you very, very much for the support. Holy crap. WCW did the same mistake that started their downfall, revealed uh, Mankind to win the title, which was mean-spirited. Excuse me. That made people change channels. AEW is now being mean-spirited about Punk. Just sad that this could be it for AEW, and Tony's face says it. I, Salt Nation, I do agree. I think that there is a very big chance that you've turned off a lot of fans, a lot of fans that were probably on the fence about AEW to this point, being like, still want to support it, still want to support it. I think even some hardcore loyalists of AEW have to look at this and go, okay, what are we doing? This is this is not this is not the entertainment TV wrestling that I want. 
Why are we doing this? Uh, I think you turn off a lot of fans. Casual fans, more diehard fans. Here's the other thing I will say. Oh, Brandon says, don't forget Osprey cut and promo Triple H. Uh, Brandon Robinson, I ain't done yet, not by a long shot. No, no, I got to talk about this Will Osprey thing in just a minute because it's not correct in what El Osprey is saying. I want. We'll talk about this in a second. We'll talk about this in a minute. I just want to talk about Salt Nation for a second here. It's talking about Tony's face. Says it. Um, it's a mistake. It is. I don't believe in doing this. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I was say. It's not worth it. You could dedicate the 10 minutes of TV time to something else. Something entirely different. You could have done a 10 minute match. Why couldn't we get Aleister Black on TV? As an example. As an example. Anybody. Where's Britt Baker? Where's any other person in the entire women's division? Why couldn't we do... Six-man tag team match for the tag team titles, the trios titles, international title. Um, give Strickland more time and Joe more time. They open and close the show, which is good. You could have given them more TV time instead of that. There is so much stuff you could have done. Safe Haven, Miro, a lovely Miro match would have been great for 10 minutes. There's a lot of things we could have done differently. And it's always hindsight, right? You could have done anything. It's always in hindsight. It'd be like, hey, you could have done this. You could have done that. I understand. But why give the other company any type of attention? And this will lead into Osprey. We'll talk about that. Alistair was in the... Keyshawn, Alistair was in the video. Yeah, he was. That was funny. I love Alistair Black because he just so casually sauntered over it was just do 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 what's this little brawl all right let's go i'm not on the show <laughs> why focus on anybody else tony khan you could introduce women's tag titles you could have introduced yeah women's tag team titles you could have done a lot of stuff man a lot of stuff um and we can banter over you should have done this or that or the other where's the kingdom wasn't that a thing give me jeff jarrett on tv I think that it says about it has been setting a bad precedent for AEW that this is their thing that they are becoming known for in the eyes. I think of a lot of fans we tune in. Oh, and I remember my point get there in a second. We tune into AEW because we look at it as like an alternative, something else to watch than WWE. That's why I do it. I want to watch other wrestling. I like dynamite sometimes. Do I agree with all the bookie? No, not at all. And I'm more of a storytelling guide. I, I like long-term... That's why I've liked Strickland's story so much. Because I've been invested in it since he came in and he started rising up. And then he had the match with Hangman. And the whole story of Hangman. And the Hangman becoming Magnum TA Hangman. Which I loved. And I've loved S Swerve's story. But that seems so much of him. As a person. And him driving that forward. Not so much Tony Khan's brilliancy in terms of booking and creating characters. And as Nero says, is the reason why you watch AEW is Strickland. That's it for me. Now then I see Jericho on my TV. Kind of tapped out from Jericho. Love it if he would go away for six months off TV, come back, refresh. But he's just on TV every week doing these long promos. And that doesn't speak to me as a wrestling fan. And that's okay. Could speak to somebody else. But yes, Swerve got himself over despite Tony Khan and the booking. And I think that's what happens to some people in AEW. Copeland's match. I like Edge. I'm a fan of Edge. Fellow Canuck from the area. Lovely human being. And I like I like Cope. But mm, the rest of the stuff is just kind of whatever. It's, it's not a good use of anybody's time. Doing this stuff. Answering pettiness using tv time to turn to wwe and be like oh yeah well we're gonna respond to you wwe doesn't it's not that ever and it's not to be like we can't wwe does stuff all the time they of course have done stuff they've done terrible things but in recent memory they don't really go on tv to shoot at the other company the same level that w that aew is doing and that's one of the big differences. We then get moments of interviews like Triple H going on Pat McAfee's show and talking about not wanting guys in his company who don't want to grind. David Henry, 12-month club member, too. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your support, brother. 
So, let's talk about this. I had another point in my head about the Tony Khan thing. Just TV time, give it to other wrestlers. It was a waste of time. Bad taste in your mouth. Doesn't work for me, brother. Let's talk about this. Because this is almost getting... It's not getting as much attention as the CM Punk footage, because clearly that's the thing. I have problems with this. And I am not trying... I am not trying... I... Good... Holy shit. There are 2,000 people in the chat right now. Holy crap. Ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Matt. This is Assemble. Welcome. We're talking AEW today. Shenanigans. I appreciate everybody coming by. If it's your first time here, welcome. Hi. Good to see you. I do AEW. I do WWE coverage, talking head stuff. And I do WWE 2K content as well. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for choosing to give up your time and hang out here with me. Appreciate you. Um, I got a problem with this. <laughs> okay. It's not... I'm not trying to defend WWE and Triple H pedigree, King of Kings. I watched the, the Pat McAfee interview with Triple H when it happened. I know what he, Triple H said. Pat asked him the question regarding talent, whatever. And Triple H's response, as we have all seen, was, I am the game and how you play it. No, <laughs> he was like, I'm going to give Golden Shovel and Pedigree everybody left and right. Because I'm the game. <laughs> no, he said in a matter of words, if you're, I see other people from other companies or doing other things that, and again, I'm paraphrasing, Hunter said, you know, I see other people coming up in other companies, other industry or within the industry, building themselves up. And then like, they're interested in them. WWE is. And then they find out, you know, the talent that they're, they're pursuing is not necessarily, oh my God, this guy nervous 2k watching. No. Um, they're nervous that or excuse me, the talent is looking at this and says to Triple H to, or about WWE, nah, you know what, the Triple H's context here. No, you know what, I don't really want to come over uh, to your company. I, I can go over to somewhere else and I could, you know, work once a week and I got time off and all of that. And Triple H saying, that's not what we're looking, that's not what I'm looking for. If you don't want to go through the grind at a young age and you're not willing to grind now then we don't want you i don't disagree and in the context of triple h's comments on the pat mcafee show oh Jax, i am nervous oh no look out triple h never said will osprey was it implied we can all assume, sure, but Triple H wouldn't sit there and be like, yeah, I'm talking about Will Ospreay. He could, he never said names. He never mentioned him by name. Was he probably referring to him? Sure, 100%. That's why I'm not trying to like defend Triple H. He was totally, it, from a casual standpoint, he's totally gearing towards this and Ospreay. For sure. But he never said Osprey. So that's the thing for me. With this next segment of Osprey coming out. I don't disagree with Triple H's perspective or TK or WWE's perspective of... We look for talent everywhere. We look for athletes. We look for people that are new to the business, to the industry. We look at existing talent that are on the indies and so on. A variety of talent, variety of backgrounds. That's what they hunt for when they're looking at talent to then go through their system. It's their business. It's their company. And if Triple H is looking for people that in his eyes, his perspective, are hungry, wanting to grind, go every day, multiple days a week to reach new levels because WWE is the biggest platform, 
then he's interested in you. That's that's the perception and perspective I took from Triple H's comments. I didn't think of Will Ospreay when he said it. Is it implied? Yeah, probably. He probably was referring to him. So then you get Osprey coming out on TV. Here's the thing. I like Will Ospreay. I think he is a tremendous talent. I think he did amazing things in New Japan. I think he is a bright spot for AEW, and I hope that he is utilized correctly in AEW and gets into feuds and has not just great matches, because we've seen that. I want to see Will Ospreay get into good programs so that they're entertaining and I'm captivated. He's great on the mic, fantastic in the ring. Zero issues with Will Ospreay here. This also goes, this whole situation here on Dynamite last night with Osprey and Renee goes back to Tony Khan. So, Ozzy Dragoon says, AW spending TV time responding to stuff WWE guys said on non-WWE programming. Great, great use of your own time, guys. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So, uh, Henry Martin says, bro, trying to feed off the anti-AEW engagement. Stick to gaming. Nah, do whatever I want, buddy. I mean, you don't have to be here. There's many other channels that you could follow and hang out with. So have a good day because I can do what I want. Here's the thing. I don't have a problem with Osprey here. I have a problem with Osprey coming out and being told by Tony Khan that he said on TV, Tony Khan said, I can go out and address this. Tony should have been, if again, speculating, if, uh, Tony Khan and Osprey are backstage. And Osprey did talk about Danielson and their feud. They did he did play into that, but he wanted to address this first. If you're backstage and you're Will Osprey and you're going to Tony Khan, you're like, hey man, hey bruv, I'm a little hot about this. I think that this was a jab at me, and I, I want to get this off my chest. If I'm Tony Khan, I go, no. No. If I'm Tony with Osprey in this moment, I go, no, the plan for the promo is I want you to go out there and I want you to put over the feud with Danielson and sell Dynasty. I don't want you to talk about WWE and Triple H and comments that were done in a press conference. Don't want to do that. Do it on your own time. If I'm Tony Khan, that's my perspective. And I'm going, Osprey, if you want to get this off your chest, Go on Twitter, go on your socials, and do it there. Be like, I don't have a problem. People do it all the time. They just go off about shit. Have Osprey cut his own promo on Twitter. Go out there and sell dynamite. Sell dynamite and sell dynasty. We're trying to sell tickets. That's what I think. So then you get Osprey to come out though, and he kicks it off, and you got Renee standing there. With the mic, doing the whole thing. And he talks, to, and Osprey just goes and says, that like, oh, you don't think I can cut a grinding? I've been grinding all the time. You grind your wife. That's how you got your job to where you are. I'm kind of like, cool. So we're doing 20-year-old jabs. I'm like, what? what's the point? Again, I go back to all of it, and I go, what's the point of doing this? What does this do for anything? But I, I do kind of, I take, I take a little issue, everybody, with Osprey saying, like, you don't know what the grind is. And of course he's passionate and he cares and he's doing this at a high level. He's like, you know, I'm flying from England here every week. I do the grind. To be fair, you, you came in, this as an example for last night. Osprey flew in a long flight. I don't envy that, but you're making a lot of money. So he flew in to do three minutes of TV on a promo. Is that it? You got paid. You flew from England to do three minutes of TV in your sweats. And then you bounced. And half of it was taking a shot at the big guy at the other company. And Sean says in the chat, what's the payoff? Yeah. What is the payoff to that? What, what gets paid off there? 
Josh says, Osprey is choosing to fly back and forth. He could have relocated. Well, these are all individual decisions in life. Osprey doesn't want to do a WWE schedule. That's his prerogative, and no one's holding that against the guy. It's, not, it's no one's business. But, we, but if you come out on TV and you're like, how dare you accuse me of not being in the grind? I fly here every single week to do TV. Okay, but Triple H's point in his statement is that he wants people that are in it five days a week that live and breathe the thing. I'm not saying Osprey doesn't, but I'm saying that Triple H is like, we've got Raw, SmackDown, NXT, live events, PLEs, media. We're working multiple days a week. That's the grind I think Triple H is talking about. Not just coming in once a week, doing a 10 minute thing and gone for the week. It's not the same schedule. It's not the same. And it applies to everybody that works at AEW. So I understand what Triple H is saying. And I understand that Will Ospreay is heated up by this because he feels kind of attacked. Sure. But you don't have to respond on a show and take up TV time. To me, that's the mistake. Do this behind closed doors or just tweet it out. And then people forget about it. But now it's a thing. And then to say like, you're grind, like I've been grinding it out and you've been grinding it on your wife. Talking about the grind. Uh, Triple H's comments were on the Pat McAfee show coming over from Russell Talk. If they're not here to be all in on this, like when I see people that come out of trying to make it and they pick the job where they go, well, they work less. The schedule is lighter. That's true. With the comments about the grind, uh... Wade Keller discussed the original promo, saying they also had Will Ospreay go on camera, interviewed by Renee, and he said the first part of the promo, sorry, excuse me, Keller is saying that the first part of the promo was him addressing the comment that Triple H said on the podcast uh, who didn't want to be part of the grind. I'm also told that this was an idea presented to Osprey. I don't know about Osprey's enthusiasm for or against it, but it wasn't something that he did on his own and he didn't wing it. Well, Osprey said that he talked to Tony and Tony approved it. So it was something that hours before the interview took place was proposed to him. That's what I'm hearing from AEW. The idea was confirmed uh, as being driven by Tony Khan, who wanted it out there. But he says, like, you were grinding on the on your wife or whatever to get ahead in the company. Really? Do you think Triple H cares? You, you're, you're making a joke that was... Ooh, 20 years ago. Like, that's that's the, the knock on Triple H who's going to be sitting there going, yeah, you, you got me. Clearly, I'm I'm doing I'm doing poorly here. And also, like, don't drag in his wife. Like, don't drag his wife into this. It's nothing to do with any of it. Triple H has nothing to do with any of it. You're upset because someone attacked your character. So kind of take it on the chin. Maybe look at why the perception is that. And it's not Osprey. It's that Tony wants these talents in, and he's like, I got you in for one day a week, and you come in and do a promo. Mercedes came in, presumably for big money. She hasn't wrestled yet. I understand saving a big talent for that, but she's on TV every week, but she ain't wrestling. So, meh. Uh, John Keegan says, good job, brother. Much respect. John, thank you very much. UK Cinema Retro Trailer Reel says, I love how grind is now going to be part of the wrestling vernacular thanks to this. If that's the case, then Mick Foley was the king of the bump and the grind. Yes. And guys like Triple H grew up in the eras of, you know, WCW and NWA and WWF and going crazy Vince McMahon schedules that are insane to even today's standards where WWE is a full-time thing, but WWF was crazy, like 300 plus days a year, no days off, work at Christmas, all of that. Absolutely wild. Here's the other point I'll make on this, guys. And thank you very much for coming by. And yeah, I, I, I'm not really trying to fault Osprey. I understand where he's coming from. I just think ultimately this and the Bucks thing is all, it's all Tony's fault. Tony's the one who's going, yeah, do this. Like, no, keep your shit to yourself. It's like, should Triple H have said that? No, that's petty too. Like, 
There's no need for Triple H to do that at his position at his level. Not at all. But he never said Osprey. If he did, and he says, you know, there were guys out there like Will Osprey and guys like that don't want to grind and they don't want to go in the system. Then you got then then sure, like gloves are off. Like Osprey, get out there and go chew him out. You mentioned your name, but he didn't. So Triple H can still sit there and go, who's Triple H could turn around tomorrow and be like, who's Will Osprey? And just kayfabe it. Because he never said his name. Heavily implied, yes. Uh, UFL reports. Renee looked disgusted as she's friends with Steph. Yeah, that was the other piece to all of this, too, is poor Renee. Renee and Tony Schiavone last night. Renee had this look of just embarrassment. Much like Tony Schiavone did. Just embarrassed and, like, Renee putting her head down like, oh. And, like, you're saying this in front of another woman. Like, who's crying in his what? Like, come on, dude. Take it backstage. Do it on your own time. That, that's what I think about all this. CM Punk uh, did respond as this news broke. That's CM Punk's response. <laughs> oh, it's just such a waste. Here's the other thing I want to say about all this, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Let me talk to you out the symbol. Yeah. The casual fans. For the CM Punk piece in the promo. And I think I said this in yesterday's video about all of this. Mecca says, I'm guessing you really wanted that CM Punk cheese steak. I take it. What's it, what cheese steak? What? No. Here's my thing. Let's talk about the punk promo for a second here. You're somebody who is kind of casual to AEW, let's say. You don't watch all the time. You watch sometimes. You hear there's a big thing going on. You tune into the show. You want to see what's up. And you see this. Are you not confusing the audience? Who is this for? Both segments, the Osprey and the Punk. At least Osprey, like, Osprey did this for a minute and then he went into Brian. So, okay, sure. But for both pieces, who is this speaking to? Who is the audience? Your hardcore of hardcore, all, all the dummies like me that, that follow everything in and out and that you just know what's going on? You put somebody casual in front of the TV. You're trying to grow your TV audience, I think, and people to buy tickets to come to the event. What if it's their first time coming to an AEW show and they see this thing thrown up on the Titantron and they're like, what is, what are these, what are the Young Bucks talking about? Oh, they're talking about CM Punk. Oh, is Punk in the AEW? No, he's in WWE. What's this footage they showed? Oh, this is from six or eight months ago at an AEW event. Punk was there. Yeah, he used to work here and now he doesn't. Okay, so why did they show it? Oh, because they're they're trying to use the footage and storyline. You're like, so is Punk going to come out at the end of all of this and save FTR? No, he doesn't work here anymore, so he can't. Kind of confusing. Then I look at the Osprey thing. And he does this whole thing on Triple H. And once again, if you are a casual viewer who's like, hey, I've heard of this Will Ospreay guy. Let me check him out. Oh, he's coming out. What's he talking about? What's he referring to? It's all this inside baseball bullcrap. No one asked for it. How does this help your TV product? How does this help to grow your audience? And then your loyal audience. Excuse me. Is going, do we have to keep taking shots for all this stuff? <sighs> Mr. Maniac, genuinely, thank you for your super chat. Genuinely, whenever uh, AEW ends up getting clowned on, flip a coin, heads, Tony did it. Tails, yeah, Tony still probably did it. Well, it seems like Tony's, Tony is doing all of it. It's quite the show to be your first one, can you imagine? do oh. Be a, yeah, that would be a lot. If this was your first time watching AEW and this is what's happening to you, you're like, I'm very confused by all of this. And it also wasn't a great show, just in general for Dynamite. And again, guys, go back to the my original thing I said when we started off today's show. 
WWE spent years when AEW came to be. Um, WWE was crap. Crap to watch. Hard to watch. Three hours of a slog of Monday Night Raw. No real stories. Just blah. AEW came around and I was like, wow, this is exciting. Look at all this talent I've never heard of or I've seen here and there. Um, Jericho's in here. Cody's in here. Wow, I get to watch the Young Bucks more often now? Like, you didn't get to see them on TV. So it was really cool. And it just, year after year, it's get, now we're at a point where I'm kind of like, so are we just kind of waiting for the next Tony announcement of I've signed such and such? And then what's the shot he's going to do? Because what Tony is proving as well for WWE is how insecure he is. Tony is with all of this stuff. It takes punk. It takes triple H one line in an interview for Tony Khan to go and green light a bunch of stuff on his TV to fight back. Even though he could do it at any point himself on his own programming or in interviews when he's been asked so many times about it, but chooses not to, he says no comment. So, it just shows me that I'm like, if you're punk, all you got to do is be like, Tony's a clown. And then it sets him off to respond. And Tony does another thing. And Triple H could just be like, I find other wrestling promotions are not in our league. And they don't want to grind. And I mean it. You're going to get more responses from Osprey and other people? Like... It, it, it just gets, it gets to be too much. Smack VIG says, WWE is a talk show more than wrestling. Oh, 100%. It is way, sometimes WWE is way too talky. Way, way too talky. Like the, the Rock Cody promo, 45 minutes. I was like, this, I understand the crowd is interrupting the Rock and all that, but this thing could have been 10 minutes. It was way too long, man. Way too long. Oh, my goodness. So... That's a lot. Get all that off my chest. Just a little bit. Just a little. Nick Bay. I got. We got one more thing, though, we want to talk about, though, today. As we're here for this whole show, guys. Thank you very, very much. 2,265 people in the chat. I love it. Thank you very much for all your support. Your super chats. If you guys can, hit the like button and subscribe. That supports the channel because we got WWE content. We got... Let me talk to you, our live show here every week, and we've got WWE 2K content coming at you as often as I can. One man show, but there's a lot to do in the bandwagon over here. So, the last thing I want to talk about, oh, we got uh, Super Chess coming in too. Uh, da, 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 da. Bear with me one second. Michael Wilson, thank you very much. Yesterday was my first full watch and was very confused. Matches, promise, weren't that great. Oh, promos weren't that great. I did like Edge's match, so did I. As well as Joe versus Dustin. Yes, that was also a very good match. Felt a little bit like, are you doing this? Because Cody was in the main event, kind of. But yeah, Michael, if you sat through your first full Dynamite, you'd be like, it's a little confusing. It's a little all over the place. Anchor Wing. Uh, know who's going to make a lot of money off this? WWE. Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is going to make a lot of money off of this. Let's stick to the topic of AEW, though, one more time. Because we're going to talk about AEW Fight Forever. This is coming over from Insider Gaming. Uh, shout out to them because they always put together good work. Dab DH says, not a knock against TNA, great wrestling, and it looks better than AEW now. Yeah, kinda. Future of AEW fight forever. Uh, so, uh, excuse me. Ah, trying to scroll up here. I believe Mike Straw did this one. Yes, Mike Straw put this together for Insider Gaming, uh, and it's a whole breakdown of AEW Fight Forever and where it's at. So they, AEW Fight Forever did announce another like Jamie Hater DLC that's coming out, and he does get a bit of a interview here, and he gives excuse me, Mike Straw gives context of AEW Fight Forever, how the inception of it was, future of it, all of that. So it's a very good write up here. Exclusive AEW Fight Forever couldn't be delayed further due to budget issues. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Please go check it out at insidergaming.com so that you guys can go support. Um, the future of Fight Forever, though. Fight Forever has released DLC. We've gotten the updates. We didn't get a little too much. Though new traditional match types haven't been added to the game, the plan was always to introduce more variety to the game as it 
aged. Stadium Stampede, the game's take on the Battle Royale genre, many of the time, many at the time felt it was a step towards adding more matches to the game as part of future updates. That said, things like adding trios matches, sources say, continue to be more difficult to implement than Stadium Stampede was. Uh, they are trying, this is a quote coming in for it, they're trying, but it feels like something that may have to wait for the next game if they don't put the extra resources to it now. One person said that adding the bigger matches to the current game, the sources did acknowledge that discussions on how to implement the bigger match types could be done. Where those discussions went, however, is currently unknown. Speaking of the next game, there is a lot of doubt surrounding the continued relationship with AEW and Ukes. While the relationship started off strong, it continues to go downhill throughout the game's development and remains tense as work continues. Quote, No one knows what's going to happen when the planned updates are done, sources said. We know AEW wants a second game to be made. But as far as who will make it, that's completely up in the air. Them, AEW, owning the game engine puts the ball in their court where to go from there. Currently, Ukes is still working on updates to the game per its agreement with AEW. As of now, the plans are to finish up all existing agreements before a firm decision is made on the game's future. I think it's done. Um, Elson from, Ma from Manila? Hi. What's up, bruv? <laughs> Nero, AEW backstage assault coming soon. Yeah, man. They call it the real glass. Um, yeah, I, I, I think based on this article, and guys, go check it out at insidergaming.com because it's a very big write-up and everything. I think Fight Forever, Ukes, finishes up their agreement, like the article says, and then they bounce, and they're done. If AEW owns the engine and owns all that stuff, it's up to them who they want to shop it around to. To go, do you want to produce our game? We have the engine. Here's everything about it. But I don't know game development. Company might look at it and say, mm, this isn't working. This is this is too much to fix. Uh, this is going to be too much work for whatever the turnaround may be. I do hope that another video game comes out for AEW, like a full console game. I just think it needs to go in a different direction. Like, this didn't work. This entire format of the game that I was excited for. Like, personally, I was like, they're going to do more of a live service model. Add roster members in there. People can pair, uh, pick and choose who they want to pick up for DLC. It just didn't come together the way it should have. And the fact that it didn't have any match types and really any depth to begin with and still did not, because they're just kind of going through, very clearly, they're finishing up what they're obligated to put out there. The Strickland DLC is Jamie Hayer one that was just announced. They did the um, the Beat the Elite Tower thing. They did all of that. There really isn't anything else that's coming. And so, so many creators and fans and all that, like myself and others, we would say, hey man, you want to fix this game? Like, you got to put in more match types. And we know that that's probably very, very hard. I don't think that's going to come at all. I think this game is done. Um, where will it go? This question to all of you. What do you do with Fight Forever? I think the brand name is... Does not have goodwill. Does not have good cachet. I think you would need to do something different. Maybe, maybe it would have to be a more traditional model. But I think it proves that like... Okay. There's a lot of factors probably in there. I don't think, I don't think at all for a second it's so cut and dry. Of like... Oh, it was this one thing. I think it was probably a culmination of many things coming together, not letting this franchise work. Do I want them to go of like the 2K model? No, because I want 2K's model to change too. <gasps> he said it? What? Who? Why? He can't say it? Yes, I can. I don't like 2K's model of like season pass DLC. I think it's very old. Uh, I would like to see a different take on it all. Do I think that will ever happen? No, probably not, because I'm sure the model works and they make the revenue the way they do, and it's just, they got an annualized franchise, so why why change it? If it works for them, brother. J-Shock Blast, what's going on, brother? Thank you for subscribing. I just don't think that this came together for a lot of reasons for AW Fight Forever. And I think that they need to change the whole game. Should AEW do another game? I think so. Do you do more of a simulation game? Maybe. See, I don't mind 
I don't mind at all the arcade, this style game they made. I just think, let's put this thing on steroids and let's go. Shop it to an EA. That's risky because it would get microtransaction to hell. But a large publisher like an EA say, here's our game. It's already built. Here's the engine for it. Can you spruce it up? Can you change it? Make it better. We need to like triple the match types. We need to put in the full roster, uh, a roadmap for DLC for a year, all the updated stuff. But at the same time, you've put such a bad taste in your mouth for that game that if you just changed it to AEW Fight Now, people are going to be like, oh, okay. You would have to show fans... To me, you would have to show fans something entirely different and new for your product because this didn't work. This, by all accounts, failed. And maybe one day we'll see the actual numbers. But it didn't work out. So I think that if you are going to ever do another full console game by AEW, AEW Games, it needs to look and feel different. And it might need to be more of a sports-style game, something like a 2K where it is more of simulation, but that takes years. Like, if you're going to start over again, you're going to put in hundreds of millions of dollars again? That's why I think it's more likely that AEW's like, okay, we don't want to, like, just drop everything we built. We have this sitting here, this, uh, this asset. Let's see if we can get somebody else to work on it. But you'd have to change up so much drastically. For me. It's for it to work. That's just me. Geeks Out Nation says, hey, they made a Raw 2 when Raw was bad, so maybe. That's a good point. <laughs> it's all possible. I see someday that they will come out with another AEW game, but this this didn't work. Uh, Michael Carson, thank you very much. I support EA getting a game. People talk about microtransactions, but I'd be all for it. They also add a lot of fighters via updates free for UFC. It's a very good point. Maybe go for more of the UFC approach. They know what they're doing over there. People buy it every... Is UFC come out every year? Because I don't play the UFC games. Like, I pick them up and play them here and there, but I don't... Are they out every single year, or do they skip a year or two? Because you need, like, a AEW Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> Jay, what are you talking about? I mean, Dance Dance is great, man. My kids play Dance Dance. Or, excuse me, no, my kids play Just Dance. It's also got microtransactions. Dad, I want this song. It's like $5. I'm like, no, you're not dancing to this thing for four minutes. <laughs> oh, they skip. Okay, John, they skip it. UFC 5, I think, was the last one. Okay, yeah, see, if I was AEW and I was putting together another game, I'd be like, two, three year cycle. That's what we want to roadmap. Give us, yes, I would say. J Swiss, I'd be like, I need full entrances. I need all the match types that a wrestling video game should have. I need the full active roster. DLC can be some legends. I need the full arenas that you have. And I need a season mode. But I, I think it's a long way away, and I think it's way too bad. Let's wrap things up here, guys. Let's go home, and let's take this home down the road. What do you want to talk about? We got a couple of minutes here. I gotta go my non-watch. I gotta go to Home Depot. Why? Because I'm looking at stuff for the studio. I might not even have time to go there. I need a desk. I gotta get a new tabletop for it. So we're gonna wrap things up here for the show, guys, but thank you very much. If you are popping in to say hi and all that good stuff, I sincerely appreciate that we got we had over 2,000 people in here down to 1,800, but that's that's fantastic. What a day. What a big old day this was. I need to eat food. Yeah, John, I gotta eat food at some point, too. Let's talk about grinding? I don't want to rant. I don't want to talk about grinding. Yeah, it's disgusting. D'Angelo, hi. Well, let's talk for another minute or two because then I got to get going. Nerdy Dude, thank you very much for becoming a club member. Too sweet to you. Skyler, we'll have a great day. I appreciate you guys being able to come out here and hang out with me. I don't want to talk about grinding. What will happen tomorrow on SmackDown? It's Oh, yeah, tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? WWE.com. Let's take a look at WWE.com. And we're also going to do draft predictions, too, very, very soon on the channel. Oh, they don't have it. Blast. Monsieur Hidan says, can I get a yeah? Yeah. What's your favorite SmackDown vs. Raw game? Probably 2007, 2008. Somewhere around there. What had GM mode the first time? It's over for AEW? It's not great. It's not great. Got a lot of problems with it. 
<laughs> JC, draft predictions? Yes, I'm doing that this week. I'm going to try for tomorrow. I have a lot of ideas on the hopper. Uh, I'm going to try and do a draft predictions thing for um, like top stars where they're going to get drafted to. Then a full draft predictions. And I'm going to probably do one within 2K of like GM mode and I'll run with two controllers and I'll be GM for both and be like, oh, this person selects this. I got to create uh, Nick Aldis in the game. 2K24, are you excited for CM Punk DLC and what DLC are you excited besides the Pat McAfee? Scotty, are you implying that I am excited for Pat McAfee DLC? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I am very much not. We still don't have a clear answer on that DLC. All right, let me look at the DLC packs for you, Scotty. <laughs> One moment, please. Your call is important to us. All right, season pass. Yes, I am very excited for playing as Punk. I'm a CM Punk fan. Shocker. You shill. You no good. 2K shill. Mother effer. I'm excited for this pack. Not just because of Punk. I am excited for that. Cult of Personality. CM Punk's in my game. Yay. It's been way too long. I want to see this. I want to see glorious 4K CM Punk in a video game. I'm excited for it. You only need one controller for two-player GM mode. Oh, thanks, Berwin. Then I will do that. The Dudley Boys, I am also very excited for. Those are my picks out of that pack. The next one, it's not bad. But it's a lot to manage. Like, Honky... Eh. Okay, this the second pack is pretty weak. I gotta be honest. What am I gonna play as? Mosh and Thrasher. Because I want my added to Dara. Honky Tonk Man, I'll probably never play. Jimmy Hart Manager? Yeah, okay, he can go with Hulk Hogan. That's cool. Sensational Sherry? That's cool too, but... Eh. Then the Pat McAfee pack. Pat, Ty, Boston Connor, AJ Hawk, Darius Butler. I'll play as Pat McAfee. This pack is probably the best, one of the best packs. I don't know. This pack is pretty good because I'm getting Michelle McCool's in there. Oh, man. This pack's not bad. And then the final one, WCW. It's very good. I get Lex Luger. I get I get Cheeky, DDP, bang, Mr. Perfect. I've always wanted that. Muda's in there. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to release any additional stars, though. Because there's like, uh, people were saying that they found Sol, uh, Sol Ruka's attire in the last update, that they put it in there. I'm like, that's odd. So I wonder if that's going to be like a bonus DLC or something. I would love it, love it if 2K turned around and they were like, you know what? People aren't really thrilled about this pack. There's a lot of people saying, this is kind of trash. I'm not a fan of it. Don't like it. This is my opinion. I'm not a fan of this pack. I understand it. I am actually excited to have Pat McAfee in the video game. But the rest, I'm thinking of people that don't watch Pat McAfee's show who are going, these are not wrestlers in the wrestling game. So why is this in here? Why am I paying for this and they're not wrestlers and I want a wrestling game? That's the. Those are the people that I'm looking at going, I don't care for this. So maybe someone like Sol Ruka ends up being a DLC patched it. I don't know. I really don't. But I don't like this pack. I got a lot of problems with that pack. I understand it. WWE wanted it. I didn't ask for it. I wanted Pat McAfee for the last two years. I'm getting Pat McAfee. But I could have gotten a lot more NXT talent in here, in my opinion. It's not very good. Not a good pack. What mode are you playing the most right now? For me, my GM. I like my GM a lot. And then honestly, I've just been, I've just been, I've been dinking around in there. That's what I've been doing. Jay Shock Blast. Darius Butler played for the Patriots. So high. See, okay, Jay, you're excited. I'm happy you're excited. I am. I'm glad that you're feeling good about this and you're, you're looking to play for that. For me, I am. But I'm a, I'm a lonely Canuck here in Canada. So what do I know? We. But I, I just, I'm like, I don't need that in a wrestling game. I just. They're going to be on my roster list. I'm like, ugh. They're going to be my draft. <laughs> They're going to be all over my TV. <laughs> yes, more legends, more NXT stars would definitely have gone a long way for this more than anything else. That's what I think. So, but what do I know? Ladies and gentlemen, big old dummy Matt, you shill, you 2K shill here. 
doesn't know squat from his hole in his butt is going to tap out now. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for hanging out, dropping a like, subscribing to the channel, dropping all of your super chats today. It was a fantastic day. I really, really hope that you guys come back again soon. We're back every single week. Typically, we do our streams on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. We did a little special one today because of all of the AEW stuff. I had to get a lot of this off my nipples and off my chest. You heard me. I said it, Blake. You heard that right. So let me know. Enjoy SmackDown tomorrow. It's going to be fun. We got more WWE content coming at you. Uh, I got another. We're going to talk about the draft. I want to talk about Money in the Bank. I want to talk about 2K. And I'm one guy and I got I got no I got no extra hands. What am I going to do with my hands? Can't do it's so much. There's so much to do in so little time. But you know what? That's a good problem to have. So go be positive. Go do something nice for somebody else. Or chill out and just have a nice day for yourself. Enjoy it. Have a great one. I'll see you next time. Yeah. Let me talk to you.